Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, my ridiculous homeowner association towed my car twice in a day illegally and I ended up teaching them a lesson. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the HOA story. And the title story starts like this. So I paid cash for a two bedroom condo in April. The condo came with two parking permits, one red, one green. The updated rules that were sent to me after closing state that an owner gets two parking permits, one for covered parking and one for uncovered parking. However, the rules do not state which permit is for which parking. Walking around the neighborhood revealed both green and red permits under covered parking, as well as about half of the vehicles showing no permit at all. One week ago, I received a notice on my windshield that my car would be towed for not showing the proper permit, even though the permit was clearly visible in the corner of the passenger side windshield. In fact, the notice was placed under the passenger wiper blade directly above the permit. I called the management company and informed them of their mistake along with a picture of the permit in the corner of the windshield. I thought that this would solve the problem, but I was wrong. I'm a nurse and I work the NOC shift. At about 13 o'clock my wife came in screaming that one of our cars was being towed. I immediately got up, got dressed and went outside to find an employee of the management company directing a tow truck to tow my car. She said that it was being towed because it had the wrong color permit. I immediately pulled up the R&Rs on my phone and asked her to show me where the color codes were explained. She couldn't do that because that explanation doesn't exist in the rules, but she refused to stop the towing company, so I had no choice but to call the police. Upon arrival, I explained to the officers what was happening and showed them the R&Rs on my phone and both of my cars with the proper permits. They told the management employee and the tow company that they had no reason to tow my car. The rep hemmed and hawed that I was parked wrong, even if the rules did not state so. The cop ordered the tow company to release my car. Problem solved, right? Wrong. I go back to bed and just fall asleep when my wife comes in screaming that they are towing the car again. I go back outside and the same cop is there from earlier. This time the president of the management company, the one who oversees HOA board meetings, is there along with the same tow truck driver and employee from before. This time my car is already up on the flatbed. The manager told police that I still had the wrong permit to use covered parking even though it was the right one according to this unwritten rule that I had learned of earlier in the day. The cop asked the manager if she had inspected the permit before calling for the car to be towed. She admitted that she hadn't and was just going off of what the employee had told her from earlier. The cop asked her to verify that the permit was the right color to be under covered parking and she hesitatingly admitted that it was. The cop was visibly perturbed and again ordered the tow truck to release my vehicle. He then gave a stern talking to the manager about making false claims and not verifying for herself what her employee told her. The cop gave me a case number and said that both reports would be available in 24 hours. I plan to use those reports to bring this to the attention of the HOA board as I know for certain that the manager will try to sweep this under the rug or will refuse to even acknowledge this incident. What should my next steps be? And here Ripe stars since this is a story from r slash legal advice there will be some comments that suggest OP what to do. Comment number one said notifying the HOA board in writing about these attempts to illegally tow your vehicle is the first step here. Looks like you're already preparing for that. The rest depends on your state laws, you might even be able to file a small claim. But if I were you, I wouldn't do it yet, even if your state laws allow this. Typically, a towing authorization should be given in writing, ask for a copy of this authorization from the management company. Make sure to let them know that you're prepared to sue them if this happens again, if you're prepared to do that. I'm not a lawyer though, just my opinion and how I would address this if I were in your position. Comment number two, notify the board. The management company might be getting paid by the board for each tow. If they're abusing it, then the board needs to know so they can evaluate their contract with the PM. Update number one. I was finally able to get the police station for the two police reports from that day. Report number one. At 1402, management believes that he does not have proper parking permits, but per RP he does. Civil issue between the RP, reporting person and the management slash HOA board over parking. The property has parking guidelines, which are un clear of what vehicle could park where. 
RP has been having issues with one specific board member who he states harasses him. RP was advised that he could obtain a civil harassment order. RP's vehicle was not towed. Report number 2 at 18 o'clock. Subject has credentials to park where he was told not to park. The HOA did not verify before calling tow. They've been counseled. The truck had proper parking pass. HOA manager did not verify before calling a tow. They've been told that they must verify prior to calling a tow or else they could face civil issues. I think this pretty much shows how wrong the HOA management was about this. I'm talking to an attorney now about my best legal options. I'll update here as things move forward. Edit on 25th of July, I received word from the HOA management company that I would not be allowed to attend the online meeting tomorrow because it's only for the listed owner who happens to be my wife. And I have a full, legal, valid and notarized power of attorney that gives me exclusive rights to discuss the property with the HOA board and HOA management. I shot back a nasty email telling the management company to go back to law school. Update number 2. There was an attempt to bar me from the meeting two days before it was scheduled. For reasons I won't go into now, the condo is held in a trust with my son as the beneficiary. Which means from a legal standpoint, he is the holder of the deed. The HOA management company tried to argue that only deed holding owners can participate in violation hearings. This despite me having a fully encompassing power of attorney for my son that explicitly gives me the power to manage all real estate holdings. In the end, my son sent an email to the HOA management designating me as his representative in the matter and they were forced to accept it. However, the meeting was postponed until August 3rd. Edit number 2. From the first viewing to the close of East Crow, I have always been the POC. The POA specific to this property has been on file with A, the East Crow company, B, the BIA, the condo is on leased Indian land, and C, my financial institution. D, the HOA management company, the one causing these problems, E, the home insurance company. The HOA management company did not even know any of my son's contact info prior to the 24th as they've never had any reason to interact with him due to the POA. So this was a ploy to prevent me from representing myself at the hearing, but it backfired on them. Update number 3. If you've been following this saga, you would know that the HOA had originally scheduled my parking violation hearing for Monday, July 28th. They then moved it to Tuesday, August 3rd, which is tomorrow. I just received an email stating that they have again rescheduled it for August 17th. I'm fairly certain that they did this to conform to California's open meetings law that states that HOAs must announce all meetings ahead of time to all HOA members. They failed to do that for the first two scheduled meetings and apparently someone got wise to their screw up. I will keep you posted on the 17th. Update number 4. Today I received a letter from the HOA management that I have violated, supposedly, CCNRs and RNR regulations by posting my open letter to HOA members on the HOA bulletin board that is located at the front of the complex next to the mailboxes. I had posted the letter that I had sent to the HOA board regarding the intentional harassment by the board regarding my properly permitted vehicle being intentionally towed on July 7th. I went through both the R&Rs and the CCNRs and could find no mention of HOA members posting on the HOA bulletin board being illegal. Interestingly though, the letter states that my violation as posting letter illegally on HOA info boards, I'm no lawyer, but illegally generally means that there's some state or local law prohibiting an act. And as you know, HOA rules are not local, state or federal law, so I don't know why they are using the term illegally. No worries, I laughed it off. My wife and I have decided to go ahead with filing suit against the HOA. We have retained an experienced law firm that only represents homeowners in HOA disputes. We'll update as things move forward. Update number 5. It's been a long two days. First off, while this parking drama has been unfolding, there's a second issue that I've been dealing with. That is an HOA board member ambushing and harassing me in the parking lot when I leave for work at night. This has happened twice in the five months that we have lived here. This is the board member who has placed security cameras at various places around the building, including one that he had pointed at the pool area, apparently recording people at the pool, including children. As a result, I had determined that my best course of action after filing a complaint with the HOA board twice, which was ignored both times, was to request a restraining order against this individual. A temporary restraining order was denied by the court and a hearing was scheduled for today to consider the regular restraining order. 
I arrived at court only to be told that the hearing was rescheduled for September 1st. Important to note here is that I received no notice of the date change is required by law. Upon arriving back home, I was greeted by an email from a high-priced HOA law firm out of Los Angeles. The letter basically states that they are representing their board member and that my RO request has no merit because he was acting within his duties as an HOA board member. However, what the letter failed to mention was that the first instance of harassment took place before he was seated on the board. The letter goes on about frivolous lawsuits having to pay the board member's legal fees, blah blah blah. Really, it's a BS letter designed to scare me off of pursuing the RO. One thing of note in the letter is its attempt to conflate my RO request with my continuous parking violations. This board member is the same one who has two parking passes that allow him to park both his cars under the carport. As regular peons only get one, the hearing I locked on through Zoom to find only the HOA management representative with her camera on. The other four board members, including the one I have the RO pending against, were all blacked out. The HOA rep insisted that it was I that requested the meeting and therefore there would be no questions. I would state my case and the board would decide in executive session what my fate would be. I argued that it wasn't me who requested the meeting, it was the board that sent the violation notice to me. Anyway, I made my case the best I could by pointing out that no new owners were told what permit was for what parking. I then pointed out that a letter was sent in February with the details of the parking permits but that I never received that letter when I closed escrow in April. And that letter explicitly states that the permits are non-transferable and registered to the individual units and owners. So the board member with two red permits is in violation of the HOA R&Rs. My pleas fell on deaf ears so now I wait to hear my fate. My wife who has been supportive has had enough though. She is ready to sell and get the F out of this nightmare. She went so far as to arrange our realtor to meet with us this Saturday. The good news is that prices have increased roughly 15 to 20 percent in just five months, so if we sell we will just break even considering our closing costs. Update number six, something that I've not mentioned up to now, is my ongoing attempt at engaging as many other homeowners as I can in the workings of the HOA and management company. To that end, I set up a Zoom call and spread the word. The call was this afternoon and 15 homeowners locked on. All of them related stories from hell concerning the management company and its principal agent who is the de facto head of the HOA and all agreed that the management company needs to be replaced. One of the homeowners is an active member of the HOA board but is resigning next week. He indicated that two other board members are either resigning or moving so that there will be three empty seats on the board. Of the 15 on the call, three agreed to be nominated to fill those empty slots. It's a start towards cleaning up the HOA board and replacing the management company with a competent one. Update number 7, lots of you have messaged me asking for an update. Since my last post, a number of disgruntled homeowners who are unhappy with the HOA board and the management company has grown to 46 out of 120 units. That's a fairly sizable chunk. We've been having weekly Zoom meetings to strategize our response to the monthly HOA meeting and and we had sent a letter to the board prior to the meeting indicating that we had three homeowners who were willing to be appointed to the board for the remainder of the term which expires in February. As I posted earlier there are two board vacancies and another board member, the one who has been harassing me, is in escrow and should be closing this week. Our grievances were simple, we are unanimous that the management company should not be in control of the HOA board. The board should control the management company, many owners expressed dissatisfaction with the parking rules and the fact that the HOA never clearly defined them. Virtually all of us expressed the opinion that the management company should be terminated for a whole host of reasons. At the start of the meeting the management, which is really just one person, muted everyone and refused to let anyone talk until after the board appointed two of their own people to the vacancy. No discussion was allowed, no questions to the new board members were allowed, our candidates were not even considered and the entire board refused to be on camera. Further, the manager would not allow any questions. We could only make statements that were less than three minutes long. In her opening, she mentioned a $7,000 legal bill that she stated the board had incurred defending a board member from an angry homeowner. That would be me. 
She then opened the floor but would only unmute one person at a time. Person after person expressed their displeasure that two new board members were appointed without any discussion or input from the homeowners. Many people asked why the board member who was an escrow did not resign from the board and allow at least one of our candidates to be appointed. Again, neither the board nor the management answered any questions. There was talk about a recall, which most of my coalition supported. One member who is not part of our group asked about the $7,000 legal expense, but the board again refused to answer. When it became my turn, I explained the best I could in three minutes why the HOA paid an attorney 7 G's and how I had been continually harassed by the board and the management. The next few speakers demanded that the HOA and management immediately cease payment to the attorney and asked why the members were not informed of the board's decision to hire one. Out of nearly 50 speakers, only one owner expressed approval of the board and the management company. After the meeting, I received a message for a 65-year-old female owner who forwarded me the harassment that she had endured by the same board member that has been harassing me. I was honestly astounded by how similar our stories were. Her niece had been living with her and found this pervert filming her from his kitchen window, which overlooks the pool area. Same thing happened to my wife, which, along with the other harassment, was why I filed the restraining order. However, in hindsight, I made a very bad decision. When I discovered that his condo was an escrow, I withdrew the RO thinking that he would soon be gone. After discovering this, I immediately sent the board a letter asking why someone who has a documented history of harassment was allowed to be appointed to the board in the first place. I've received no answer, that's it in a nutshell. My group will meet on Zoom on Sunday to discuss what our next moves should be. I welcome your input. Update number 8. It's been about a month since I last posted here, so here's a quick update. After the previous HOA meeting, every homeowner received a letter stating that the board was levying a one-time $185 assessment fee to cover legal fees of $10,000 incurred by the board to defend the, now no longer, board member from my restraining order lawsuit and to cover the recall election that was called for but then rescinded by my group. It was pointed out by one of us, who happens to be a lawyer, that every HOA board member must be covered under a director's and officer's liability insurance policy. The question was asked why the board did not file a claim on this policy before levying the assessment fee and why we were being charged for an election recall that never happened. To date, the board has not responded to either question. On the legal front, I attended court to formally withdraw my restraining order complaint on the board member who had been harassing me. I did it because the MLS listed his condo as an escrow and I figured I wouldn't need an RO if he was moving out. The attorney hired by the HOA was there and the judge asked him if he agreed with the dismissal. He answered that he did, case closed, or so I thought. A week later I get a certified letter that they are suing me for attorney fees and costs. At that time, the bill was just under 10k. The letter claimed that because I withdrew my complaint, the board member was the prevailing party and was entitled to recover attorney fees and listed a number of court cases in his defense. A quick Google revealed that all of those cases involved contract law, not civil restraining order cases, so I typed up my response and filed it with the court. The hearing to determine if I owed them 10k was on 21st October. It took the judge less than three minutes to tear their argument to shreds and dismiss their case, ergo I'm not paying a dime to the HOA board member or the HOA itself who hired the attorney. Keep in mind that this board member had resigned and when his condo sold and the HOA attorney was still being paid to defend him. He did not even come to court as he has moved out of state completely and there was another HOA monthly meeting. Again, the board allowed no Q&A, just three minutes per person. About 30 owners showed up and the day before, the HOA sent out a blast email to owners telling them that the legal fees had increased to 12k because of a resident who continues to cause trouble with the board. Also that their $185 assessment was to cover that while they acknowledged that the recall effort was off the table. During my three minutes I explained in bullet points the lawsuit and that the HOA's case against me to collect attorney fees was denied and dismissed by the court. Others asked why the homeowners had to foot the bill for a civil issue not involving the HOA. Again, the the board refused to answer any questions and told everyone that they could email
mail their questions to the board. What a cop-out. I understand that there has been considerable pressure mounting on the HOA to explain why the DNO insurance wasn't utilized to pay the legal fees. I surmise that the board knows that any investigation into the history of the offending board member would reveal that he had been accused of harassing other owners numerous times before he was seated on the board. And that would preclude him being covered by the insurance policy. This is an evolving part of the story. On the parking issue, I discovered that the woman who signed the authorization to tow my wife's car is not an HOA employee or even board member, nor is she employed by the management company. As far as we can tell, she is simply a friend of the manager. California law requires that the person authorizing a tow to do so in an official capacity as a manager, board member or employee of the HOA. Bringing this to the attention of the HOA and the management company has gotten me nothing but silence. I'm considering pursuing this in small claims court as there's another owner whose car was towed that day who was also never provided with the parking rules when they purchased their condo. They are definitely suing the HOA in small claims to recoup the towing fees of nearly $400. That's it in a nutshell, nothing earth shattering, I was relieved that the judge found in my favor in the lawsuit and I know that a number of owners are demanding answers from the HOA board. My group is setting our rights on the HOA board election coming up in February, there's nothing the board can do to stop that from happening. I will update as appropriate. Final update, it's been a turbulent few months dealing with the parking issues and harassment, but I'm pleased to report that some progress and resolutions have finally occurred. So first regarding the parking rules, after repeated requests from homeowners, an emergency meeting of the HOA board was called in November to address the issues once and for all. At the meeting, the board acknowledged that the parking permit rules had never been clearly defined or properly communicated to owners. They voted unanimously now to revoke the existing rules and establish new clear rules specifically specifying which permits are for covered versus uncovered spaces. These rules were then distributed to all owners. As for the management company, our group of dissatisfied homeowners continued recruiting support from other residents. By the annual HOA meeting in February, we held a solid majority and were able to vote out the incumbent board members who had long been under the sway of the management company. We appointed new independent members and they immediately terminated the contract with the problematic management company. A reputable new company has since been hired and the transition has gone smoothly. Turning to legal matters, after I provided proof to small claims court that the woman who authorized the tow of my wife's car was not affiliated with the HOA in any official capacity, the judge ruled in our favor and ordered the HOA to reimburse the towing fees as well as additional damages for the improper tow. Regarding the former harassing board member, after dragging things out as long as possible, the HOA's insurance company ultimately paid out the full $12,000 legal bill since it was determined the harassment issues predated his time on the board. As for my own lawsuit, no further action was taken against me after the judge dismissed their initial claim. Peace has finally been restored. And with this, we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please check out my endless playlist where where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.